there he was, my next fare. He smelled like booze and cigarettes and trouble, but he was pretty to look at, so I flashed him a smile. He asked if he could drive, said he would pay double. This was highly unorthodox, but I agreed. He drove us down a couple of back roads, and I used the term drove loosely. He was quiet, determined, but in a way that makes you uneasy. We finally reached his destination, a bridge that was as dark and mysterious as he was. I watched as a bead of sweat rolled down his face. I took a deep breath and told him to get the fuck out of the cab right now. I did not have to repeat myself. I exited the cab and walked over to him. I looked deep into his eyes, his soul. I pointed to the back seat and he got in without even thinking twice about it. As I slipped into the driver's seat, I could almost feel his anxiety become my own. It was quiet, too quiet. I turned on the radio to break the silence and wouldn't you know it, Don't Fear the Reaper was playing. I shifted into first and hit the gas, barreling through the sea of darkness that lie just beyond the edge of the bunker. He was no ordinary fare. This was no ordinary bridge. And I was no ordinary cab driver. She held the tray in her hands, shaking just slightly, but not enough to spill any of the contents on the floor. What was inside was too precious, too valuable, and although she could be clumsy at times, she never was with this. As she got closer to the room, all she could think about was her deep-rooted disgust that was slowly overtaking her entire being. Why was she the one that had to do this, all day, every day? It was more of amusing than a question. But it didn't keep her from thinking it over and over again in her head every morning when she was finished with her own nightmares. But these people were sick, evil, tormented, and alone, as they should be. They had done horrible things, unspeakable things, and she was there to serve them up a helping of what was coming to them. This particular morning, whatever was inside smelled deliciously horrible like rotting flesh and a hint of vomit. Whoever this mystery asshole was behind the door was in for a real treat. When she got to the door, she heard faint (laughs) crying from the other side. They knew what was coming. They always did. She went inside and put the tray down, closed her eyes, removed the lid and exited the room. What followed next were screams, agonizing and blood curdling. But instead of feeling remorse or sympathy for them, it did nothing but make her smile.